Hey folks and welcome to the R&D Diesel channel. Today we're going to be working on my 1988 Jeep Comanche with the 4 liter inline 6. Now today we're going to be upgrading the fuel pump from the OEM unit to this Bosch 69302 unit. Now from my understanding, I recently purchased the thing. It's not exactly a drop-in replacement. We've got to do some modifications to make it work, but that's what we're going to find out today and we'll see how it goes. Now, for starters, I want to talk a little bit about why I'm replacing the fuel pump. Now, in particular, it's because I'm having a problem with this thing. What's going on is that whenever I hit the accelerator and it gets to a certain point, certain RPM, the engine just doesn't seem to have any more power. I, it, it seems almost like once you get past a certain throttle point, like it makes power, but then it stops and it kind of just almost stumbles and doesn't want to do the trick. Now, I've already looked at a lot of sensors and tried to troubleshoot some stuff. I've replaced the throttle position sensor and I've also already replaced the fuel pressure regulator thinking those either of those might have been contributing to the issue. But unfortunately it wasn't either of those things. And uh, you know I probably spent a little bit more money than I should have just kind of throwing parts at this. But uh, in particular what I ended up doing and the reason I suspected it's the fuel pump is because I replaced the fuel pressure regulator and of course that didn't solve the problem. But in addition to that, I did some reading in my manual and found out that the fuel pump that you've got, if you completely block off the flow, you should be able to get upwards of something like 90 PSI of fuel pressure. So what I did was there is a return line here coming off the fuel pressure regulator. And if you basically block that off, you can't really see it, but there's a soft rubber line here. That's the fuel return line. If you pinch that off with a pair of vice grips or something like that, and then you basically take the fuel pressure regulator out of the equation and you allow your fuel pump to make as much pressure as it can. Now, in my particular instance, my fuel pump didn't make over 30 PSI and it's supposed to be able to go way higher than that. So that's why I suspect the fuel pump to be the problem. Now, the thing is that the fuel pump I've got in this thing is only like a year and a half old, maybe, maybe two years. And so I'm kind of disappointed that it didn't last so long and hence, so I'm wanting to upgrade to this Bosch unit, which has higher reviews and will hopefully last a bit longer. But let's get to it and see if it fixes our problem. Now, of course, the uh, fuel pump is located in the fuel tank right underneath the truck. It's going to be right up over there. Well, let's get set up and we can start pulling that guy out. All right, so underneath the truck right now. And to begin with, I'm going to start by cleaning off the uh, area where the fuel pump is. I've just got some purple power degreaser here. I'm trying to be clean about this because I can be opening up this fuel system and I'm going to keep as much dirt out of the fuel tank as possible. All right, so I got that clean. We're gonna go ahead and start disconnecting things. Cut some zip ties, so I'm using to hold everything together. All right, now back here there is a cable that is used to power both the sending unit and the fuel pump. So let's go ahead and disconnect that and just unclips. Yeah, now we'll go ahead and shift our focus to disconnecting the fuel line. So we've got a return line here. You can see the line that says not for fuel injection systems on there. That's the return line in my case. This is all aftermarket stuff because, you know, original lines from the 80s don't really last. But I'm just going, I've got some worm clamps here. I'm just going to disconnect. Now pull those guys off. And of course, get a bunch of gas coming out. And some of these can be a little bit stuck. Good way I found is if you use a pair of pliers or just kind of twist the line, it'll help it come off, even though it's really just a barb that's holding it on. And there we go. All right, and now we can actually address removing the fuel pump. So. The fuel pump is really inside this big sending unit and it's held in with a big ring here and it's basically kind of a weird looking bolt I don't think of it as so we're gonna go ahead and hit the same counterclockwise to loosen it up 
So I've got a brass rod here that I'm going to use. I'm using brass rod so I can avoid making any sparks here so that I don't cause an explosion, but I'm going to tap it with a hammer here. Feel it loosen up. And there we go. So go ahead and pull that guy off. And now the fuel sending unit should be free. Now it might be a little bit stuck in here because it sits for a while. There's actually a rubber O-ring style gasket in here. It's holding it in place. But it kind of just sits in there. And it's got this kind of a long elbow to it so that it can reach down into the tank. And you've got to finagle it out of here. Okay, and there should be a sock on the very bottom of this. That's a pickup screen. And then you gotta be careful of your float as well. Don't want that get messed up, but then you, there you go. Get the whole sending unit out. Pull this down, set it off to the side. And let's go bring this over the table and see if we can get to swapping over to the other pump. All right, so we've got this thing over the table now. And we can really take a look and see the whole structure of the sending unit. So this here is the fuel pump, the original one. And what's interesting to note is that the old unit is way bigger compared to the smaller Bosch unit, which is part of the reason why they're not exactly a bolt-in replacement. But in addition to the fuel pump, what we've got is you got the wires that go to it. We have a positive wire here. Of course, it looks like they're all colored brown. And this is going to be powering the fuel pump. And then we have the ground here, which in my case is just this yellow wire that I've grounded to the frame. And then I also have the sending unit or the uh, float sensor that gives us an idea about how much fuel is in the tank. Now yours may not look exactly like mine does because I am holding this thing in place with a worm clamp. I've gone in here before and this fuel pump itself is close but not the exact replacement to the original. And that's why I had to do a little bit of modifications already. And if you take a look you can see I already did grind away part of the original sending unit and that's why it looks a little bit goofy but nonetheless it should be so you might have to do some additional modifications on yours as well to get this new Bosch pump to work but let's go ahead and start taking this thing apart and we'll see how it goes Disconnect the fuel line. Disconnect the power supply. Actually, it's just a spade connector. And there we go, got the old fuel pump out. I'm just pulling off this little retaining bracket. All right, so now we've got pretty much everything disconnected. Anyway, we'll go ahead and continue with installing the upgraded Bosch pump. Now, first thing we're gonna address is trying to get the whole structure in here. So let's go ahead and see. Well, the bottom of it seems to fit in just fine. Also got this guy. Let's see if the new ring fits any better. I actually like that, that fits pretty well. Also looks like we have this sort of adapter on here. We might need to use this. So as you look at it, yeah, there's no way in heck that I'm gonna be able to hold this in place with a factory retaining ring. So I'm gonna have to use this adapter that came with it. All right, so now I'm sitting here trying to figure out all the wiring for this thing. Looks like I got this little wiring harness that came with the pump. So the guy just clips in there, nice and secure. 
And it is also labeled minus and positive, so that's definitely good to have. Okay, so I think I figured out how this adapter goes. We'll set that guy on there. Slide in this little slotted ring right there. And then on the bottom of it, we get this retainer. And then, oh yeah, that's how it goes. All right, well, just got a new sock or pickup fuel filter screen for this. Let's go ahead and make sure it looks the same as the original and definitely much cleaner. All right, so we're going to head and loosen this up a little bit. Now I know everything fits quite right. And I'm going to go ahead and install this new discharge tube. Make sure you put these new clamps. I'm going to go ahead and use these clamps that are supplied because they are the nice flat style, so it should be able to get a much better grip. Yeah, and unfortunately, I just realized I need to pull this off and we'll need to install the retainer and all that first. All right, got that on. Go ahead and put this other clamp hose. Pretty good and should come off there now. All right, so at this point we got this thing mechanically all installed. And I'm pretty impressed. It didn't really require any modifications, at least on my end, although I think originally there was a little bit of kind of an additional piece of material right here that I already previously removed. And see, so that's something that you might have to remove, maybe use a Dremel tool or something along those lines to get that taken care of. All right, so now that we got this thing mechanically installed into the sending unit, the next thing to address is the wiring. Now this new Bosch unit has this kind of a weird style connector. And you gotta remember that the original style that I had, these screw-on type terminals, but this of course doesn't have that. So we're gonna have to adapt. Now the ground wire here, or the black wire, we originally had connected to frame, so I'll just go ahead and put a terminal clamp for that. And then we'll have to do something else for the red wire to make that work out. Now I've got this little crimp on terminal that I'm gonna use for the ground. And it doesn't really matter too much as you can't really short out a ground. Give it a tug test, pull it, make sure it's on there good. All right, got that connected. Now, whenever it comes to the positive wire, you know, I do want to have this thing to where we can still disconnect it later down the road, so I don't necessarily want to hard solder it in place, although, frankly, that would probably be the best option. So for the positive wire, I've got these shielded electrical terminals I'm going to go ahead and use. I would use this original one, but you can see that if I were to just crimp on one side, I'd still have this exposed little metal piece, and I don't really want that because if it shorts out, it could cause a spark, and that would be bad inside of a gas tank. So go ahead and cut off the old 1980s connector. And there we go. All right, I think that should do it. Got everything connected. Let's go ahead and drop this thing back in the tank. All right, we're back underneath the truck. Make sure the seal is clean. It's still in good condition. And we'll go ahead and make sure it's set in the right place. And now, time to finagle the whole thing back in. Go ahead and take this retaining ring and slide that around. Alright, there you go. You can really feel it 
kind of pops into place. Line up the slots in this retaining ring. And now we'll use our brass punch and hammer and hit it the opposite direction we did last time to tighten it up. Give it a tug. Looks like that should do it. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and reconnect the fuel hoses. And one way you can figure out if you didn't make a video like I did to help you remember which one went where, you can look at it and see that the larger diameter hose goes to the outlet. I just reconnected. There's a holder here that supports the lines. Mine's still in okay enough shape that it supports everything. And we'll just reconnect the power supply. And there we go. Now next thing I'm gonna do is grab some cable ties and we'll tie everything up, make sure everything's out of the way so we don't, nothing flops around and hits the drive shaft. That could be really bad. All right, that should do it. Let's see if this thing fires up. test drive and see if it fixed the problem. Well, folks, that does it for today's video. I hope this helps you out. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.